This is Phil, Phil in Florence. What I'm gonna do today, first, let me say, you know you don't see many channels do beef ribs a lot. Everybody does them, but since they're about $60 for a three bone rack of beef ribs, uh, unless somebody gives them to you, you don't spend that $60 that often. But in the last month, I've seen a couple of channels trying out some of the short beef ribs from Walmart. It, they pretty much raved over for what they were, how good they were. So I said, you know, there's a net. I'm gonna go to Walmart and I'm gonna see if I can find some of these short beef ribs. And sure enough, they had them right down the street here at the little super center, whatever you call that place. But uh, you can get them either still in with the bone about in pieces about that long and they're flat you know what i'm talking about they're not the big dino ribs but uh, or you can get them they had them uh already sliced single ribs and so that's the ones i got because first i was going to get them and put them on my ribble later like i did last week lay them out on there but I changed my mind. So the setup I've got today is the Weber kettle with the Cajun banded extension ring. You'll see it in just a minute. No, I'm not doing the rotisserie today. And I'm using the charcoal ring out of the stock charcoal ring out of the Weber Smoky Mountains. On top of that, I'm going to lay the fire dial. I've, I've had this set up one time before. I put some um, brackets in my the Cajun banded extension ring to hold a grate. Today, I'm gonna to be using something that I hadn't used in nine months, I guess, my barbecue guru. Since I was gonna do these beef ribs, I wanted to run this thing around 270. And so with that guru, I can punch in 270 and it'll you know, keep that pit right there. I'm gonna do that for about three hours by the way, this is a Malcolm Reed uh, copycat cook. Go to his channel if you want to see him do it. But uh, I saw that, I don't know, a couple years ago. And I've been meaning to do that cook, and I forgot about it. If you don't have a, um, a cook list, when you see something you want to do, you need to write it down on a cook list. Because you'll forget, just like I do. <laughs> and I'm old enough to use that as an excuse. Uh... Anyway, I'm gonna hook up this uh, Guru. It's already hooked up. All I gotta do is uh, is put the probes on the grate. And I'll be back in a minute and show you what I'm gonna do okay, next. Hey guys, here's my setup here. Well, the Weber kettle with the Cajun banded extension ring. Um, got the Guru, barbecue Guru. And I've got the Maverick XR50. And so, I'm going to go in and get those uh, ribs salt and peppered and ready to put on. Here are my ingredients for this cook. Here are my beef back ribs. And as you can see, they're sliced. I think I've got about 10 of them. Anyway, we're going to be making a braising liquid to go in a pan. And it's going to consist of these vegetables. Not this, we're gonna wrap some bacon on this asparagus. That's not part of this braise, braising stock. We've got some onion, carrots, some rosemary, some tomato paste, and of course this bacon goes with this asparagus over here. All right, some garlic we're gonna crush. And some beef stock and about half of that bottle of red wine. Then we're going to heat that up and let it cook down. And then we're going to put those beef ribs in in this uh, pan for the last hour. First, we're going to put them on the cooker for three hours. Then we're going to put them in this liquid to finish off the cook. 
anyway, I saw Malcolm Reed do this and it looked absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna give it a try. Let's get some uh, little Worcestershire. These aren't like the dino bones. They don't have a lot of meat, but they what they do have is good. And uh, it's got good fat to render down. So, we'll find out, won't we? And just a little sprinkle of garlic, granulated garlic. Okay, let's get these uh, in this pan here. Picked up this pan from the chef store in Columbia. It's a good size. I was wanting one. You know, we got the long one, but I wanted one half that size. And I got, I think I got two of them. I hope mine turns out as good as Malcolm's did. All right. I'll see you outside. All right, let's get this lid back on. We'll check back later on. Okay. okay, it's been about an hour and 10 minutes. These ribs have been on. They've been averaging around, oh, 270, 260 to 70. And so I'm gonna spritz them just to make sure they don't dry up on me. I've got a little of the same thing I'm putting in the the braising liquid is a little Worcestershire some red wine and some beef stock that's what it is okay after looking at them it looks like they're brown and crusty the outside is like I wanted I'm gonna finish tendering them up in that braising liquid so let's go get okay, it. if you hear strange noises that'll be Janet watching football in the next room I got me some uh, garlic this smashed. I've got me two onions and all I did was just cut them in quarters and then maybe half that again, just chunks. Four pieces of uh, celery, I'm just gonna cut those in the same type chunks. Got that in there. I'm gonna go in with a can of tomato paste. Now, Let's pour some beef broth in there. Probably about all of this that's in this container. Good stuff here. Now for the wine, the red wine. About half, yeah. It's about right. Now, before I forget, let's put a little salt in here. Go with the big end open this time, and well, it all went at one time. Kind of just work it around and then do a little stirring. I think I got all my ingredients in there. I'm looking around on this bar and I don't see anything left. All right, we're going to take this outside to the smoker and we're going to place those, uh, those beef ribs down in this glazing sauce we're gonna have with dinner is some bacon wrapped asparagus so I didn't do that on camera everybody knows how to take four stalk asparagus and chop a couple inches off the stalk end and then wrap them in bacon that's that's what that is we'll be putting that on too all right let's get some ribs and put them in this sauce We want the meat side down in this. Looks good to me. All right, guys, it's been four hours and 17 minutes since we started to cook. It's been in the braise for about two hours and 50 minutes. I didn't cook it on, in the smoke, but an hour and a half. But those ribs were so, you know, thin. They weren't real big, thick ribs. I didn't want them to get overcooked. I just wanted them tender, so 
anyway, we had them as, we had good bark and nice color. It was just a matter of getting them tender. All right. Ooh, they've been bubbling away. Look at that. I think they're getting tender now. I'm going to cheat and taste a piece of it. See what we're working with, as they say, in the pit master world. What are we working with? Oh, yeah. That'll eat right there. I think I'm going to call it. All right. I'm going to cover this back up and let that ball game finish. Clemson's playing and they pretty much got this one under control against A&M. Carolina had a big win today. Of course they should have. Still bubbling. I just took it off the cooker. Beef ribs. Short beef ribs. Just dipped out the meat, the carrots, some of the onions, and the rest of the celery and onions have cooked down in there, and I'm getting ready to press that braising juice uh, to make an au jus in here. Be right back. Like I said, I did Malcolm Reed's cook of the short back ribs. Mine may have not have been as pretty as his, but they came from Walmart, like I said earlier. And for the money, they're good. And you'll see, and they cook down tender. Um, we went an hour and a half in the smoke, and then I put them in the uh, braising uh, liquid that I made, put together, you saw that. And, uh, and they stayed in that close to three hours. So... Let's open them up and see what we've got. Grabbed them with the tongs to lift them out. They were, you know, falling away from the bone. I'll just get a pretty one right here. Let's just, uh, as you can see, when you go to mess with it, the bone just pulls right off of it. Mm -hmm. So I'll just leave that right there. That's delicious. I'm going to give my camera lady the very first test. Oh, okay. Mmm, good. Are they tender enough? Mmm, very good. All right, I'm going to get me one. See the what, sauce is so good. What's going on with that? All right, that looks good. Mmm. That's very good. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Tender? I recommend making this recipe. Yeah. All right, that's the au jus. Mm-hmm. And you know those vegetables that were in there? Well, the celery and onions cooked down pretty good, but here's a great big old carrot mm -hmm. that I saved. Where's the asparagus? Mmm. That's delicious. Great. Then Janet's made some whipped potatoes. Yep. And I'll show you my plate in just a few minutes. What about the asparagus? We served this up. Well, we do have some asparagus. It is still in the little oven over right. here. Okay. You'll have to see that on my plate in a little bit. Okay. So, there's my cook for the day. It's, it's an involved cook. You know, making the, putting together that braising, you know, cutting up vegetables and throwing them in, a, in that pan, but you know, I have my guru working, and that maintained the uh, temperature at 300. 270 for the first hour and a half, and when I put uh, everything in the pan and covered it up, I stepped it up to 300. So anyway, we're going to enjoy this. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with us today. We got some more football to watch and see if Texas. Yeah, my Tigers won. Yeah, Yay. Tigers won. And the Gamecocks won. won. Yeah. So... We're, we're good. We're good on our teams, but now we're <laughs> going to go and see if Texas is back, right? <laughs> I know uh, some of my buddies, my cook buddies, are LSU boys. <laughs> we'll see if the LSU boys can, can hold back to Texas. Uh, long, long. And there's some cooks in Texas, too. That's right. We, well, that's right. Well, <laughs> as big as Texas is, there's more in Texas than there are in, in Louisiana. So, uh, may the best team win. Right. 
So until next time, this is Phil and Florence. And Janet and Florence. That's right. And go Tigers. We'll see you. Bye.